very straightforward part of the course on job, batch and flow production or continuous production. Um, so we need to know what each of these terms mean. We need to be able to, usually in the que question, they give you an example of a business and they ask you to identify a suitable method of production and give reasons why. Um, so job production, it's producing a single product at a time and it's usually made for measure, it's usually a bespoke um, product, it's it's when, you know, if you ever describe something as a project, it, this is usually what you're um, producing. Uh, we've got a, a, a customised kind of birthday cake here, um, a very ornate conservatory, lovely conservatory, but very ornate and very very much made to measure, and the Euro Tunnel, you know, big building projects, bridges would be um, job production. Um, you're only producing um, one um, unit of output usually, so the process is very labour intensive. You need very skilled craftsmen or women. Uh, automation is quite limited because um, you, you're maybe not going to use this type of machinery again. Uh, and often when you're starting off as a business and you're building prototypes, um, it's usually job production, you're just doing a one-off. Um, so looking at the advantages, you are making a product that completely fits the need of the customer, it's completely bespoke, it's customised, um, workers are using a really, real range of skills and it requires a lot of knowledge and expertise uh, and so it can be quite motivating, quite a challenge for employees. Uh, and organising it is fairly simple, it depends what type of product, uh, project it is to be honest, like channel tunnel wasn't that simple, but coordination, communication, supervising um, is straightforward, relatively speaking. However, labour costs are going to be quite high because production is labour intensive and skilled workers are obviously quite expensive. Uh, you're not going to get those economies of scale. Um, completing the project is going to take quite a bit of time and lead times can be lengthy. That's because you've not done it before. It's a new, it's the unknown. Um, so everything takes a lot longer the first time you've done it. And um, the sales team would have to be very well qualified. So imagine that conservatory, if um, someone was getting the specifications from the um, from the customer. I mean, if we go back to that photo, I would love that conservatory, but I wouldn't be able to describe it to like a salesperson. I'd be like, oh, you know, I want something that looks a bit like this. They would have to really go through the process and explain to me exactly the specifications, exactly what I wanted. Okay, next batch production. Um, it's used when there's uh, more kind of continuous rather than one-off demand uh, and this is where your products are made in batches so we can say bread is usually the example of bakers although we've got batches of chairs here being made um, there's some standardization as in some of the products are always the same but you can vary the batches so here we might have a um, batch of these look like pretzels or some, something and then you've got like buns here and different types um, so you can vary the batches or vary the flavours and you can also, it's quite, it's fairly flexible because you can do large batches or small batches. So in terms of the um, advantages, it's still flexible, maybe not as flexible as job production but you can still have some customisation, some variance between the batches. Um, you can get employees concentrating on one task rather than whole task so you can kind of reduce the need for skilled employees so it's a little bit cheaper. Um, less, less variety of the machinery is needed uh, than job production because your products are more standardised uh, within the batches um, and you can also have kind of part finished goods and then um, store them uh, and then when people kind of come in and um, ask for the finished product you can quickly make the, the end processes or do the end processes. So I'm just thinking about um, in restaurants, they do a lot of that. So a lot of maybe Italian restaurants, the base of a lot of the meals might be a tomatoey sauce. So they'll batch make the tomatoey sauce. So, uh, and then they'll individually like customize it at the end for, you know, is it a chicken dish? Is it going on fish? Is it going in this? You know, is it going on a pizza? Is it going on pasta? So a little bit of batch and job production going on there. Um, However, it's more complicated um, and I've got this kind of coordination and um, planning uh, are more important. Machine and workers could be idle between uh, making the batches, so definitely in brewing, there's a lot of kind of uh, brewing of beer, that is, there's a lot of idle time, so you have to kind of clear out the, the vats every day um, and that could, um, you know, mean that workers are idle. Um, 
it could get very repetitive, the work, so motivation may suffer. And if the batches are small, then your unit costs are still going to be quite high. It's only when you get really large batches that it reduces uh, the unit cost. So lastly, flow or continuous production is um, when production is carried out continuously. Um, production is carried out in sequences, one after the other. Um, so often on a conveyor belt process, very large quantities produced. It is very much standardised, very little variation between the products. Um, Semi-skilled workforce specialising in one area and there's a, it's very capital intensive, very large amounts of machinery. So your advantage is you really gain from economies of scale and you have cheaper unit costs. It's very automated, uh, so less need for labour and you can produce really high, really large quantities. Disadvantages are that it's very, very expensive to set up because you need very specialised machinery um, and so there's going to be a lot of investment. Um, it's standardised, um, so, you know, it's one product, one size fits all kind of thing. Workforce may be least motivated in this type of production because it's very repetitive. They're not going to see the finished product and um, the production, because it each product moves from one stage to the next stage to the next stage. You can get bottlenecks. You, if you have a breakdown in the process, you could have um, serious delays. So, the factors to consider when you're thinking about what type of production should we take. So, there was one question one year about jams, different jams. So, you have to think about the nature of the product. You know, what type of uh, demand is there going to be for this product? Do we need to have large quantities or is it just a one-off production? Um, what stage of development is it? Is it a prototype because that's more job production or is it more developed and it's out on the market? Is it just, you know, the introduction phase so you might just want to do a few batches to get a bit more market research, find out what people really like, or is it in full flow, you know, Coca-Cola, tried and tested, continuous production? Do you need variety? Do you need to vary the product between batches of so batch production, or can it just all be the same product produced in the same way? And price, is it going to be high price product where it's very customized, where you, you know, job production, or is it a kind of um, mass produced product which people are only going to you know, pay uh, a certain amount for, um, so you need to be able to get your unit costs really, really low. So have a think about those types of factors when you're answering a question and selecting something. But nice little picture here, we've got fashion designer making customised dress, so job production, batch production with our baker, and then flow production. I'm not too sure what this is, it look, is it Coca-Cola? Maybe. Looks like continuously making Coca-Cola. <laughs>